Hello friends. Uh, today I'm here again with another video. Um, in this video we're going to talk about something very simple but very very important. Um, how many times uh, you know when we work with Power BI reports or any other BI tool we always have some element of time intelligence for example comparing this month's sales with the previous month's sale or this today's sale with yesterday's sale, previous day's sale, this year, previous year, and and uh, similar uh, scenarios like that. And there's a around 44, 45 time intelligence function built in DAX, which allow us to do these kind of comparison. Today, I'm gonna to talk about something um, very, very simple. Uh, we're gonna take an example of, uh, like compare today's date with yesterday's date, previous day sale and give the difference. It sounds very simple, but when you don't have a sale in the previous day, let's say you want the previous day is not like today's 4th of January and previous day sale is in generally like 3rd of January, but let's say if there's no sales on 3rd of January and the last sale is in December 28th, for example. So we want to compare today's date, today's sale with the previous day sales on which the actual sale happened. No, the previous days means in uh, yesterday, but when the, uh, the sales actually happened. Uh, let's look into, first of all, previous day function if we will do in normal circumstances, like when our data is like have a sales or every day, and how we will solve around when there is no sale yesterday and we go back to the whatever the most recent sale is, uh, not today, but before today and how, how we will solve for that. Um, let's uh, uh, look into the data and then start writing some decks and then, then go from there. Um, here it is, um, here is our simple data. Uh, so I have a sales table um, which shows the sales by date. So I have a date coming from calendar table. Again, anytime you're working with time intelligence, it's recommended as a best practice that you must have a calendar table in your model. So I have a calendar dimension, and then I have a sales table linked together on the date and uh, sales that I'm using a measure, which is simply a sum sales, right? So it's pretty straightforward, nothing fancy about it. So the ask here is to get the previous date sale and then compare uh, with today's sale. So we're gonna write uh, a measure, which is simple, let's say previous, the sales is equal to so calculate our sales measure which is sum of sales and then there are many functions available previous day calendar date so this will move it one day back and let's change it to zero and so if we put this in our visual here what we have here is this is today's sale, January 6, 2018, and 8,015 is yesterday's sale. So as that's a fifth. And then we have on fourth, 8,050, and the previous day sale is um, 14,671, and so forth, so on. So this works perfectly fine. From here, we can always create, you know, difference, percentage change, and, and whatnot. Um, but let's see, um, there's a, before we do that, there's another way you can do that is always, is we can always move the date back uh, by one day. So date add function we can use, calendar date, uh, minus one and date. So the so same function doesn't matter uh, whether you use um, um, a previous day or a date add, but I just want to show the two different way you can solve for it. So this is pretty straightforward, it's simple and everything looks great. And uh, now here comes a challenge. So I'm gonna, I have another table here, which I'm gonna quickly show. Um, it's called, I just named it table. So it has a very simple like, category, date uh, when the sale happened and the sale. So as we can see, uh, there is a sale on January 1st, January 12th and January 22nd and then on for category B, January 1st, 14, 22nd, C is a different date. So they have a sales, but it's not continuous sale. So if we apply the same on this particular table, 
how would that look like again i have a relationship set up with this table with the my our calendar dimension the same way so what we're going to do is let's uh, create it here so we go our table so i already have a total sales by year which is some simple sum so that's again same thing uh, date from our calendar dimension and make the size a little bigger so make it 14 or 16 16 maybe so what we have is that our dates and then we bring our my year which is total sales so it shows us on whatever the sale is happening on each day so now the challenge here is if i put the previous day sale in this one so same measure what we did in the past so previous day sales version one because we already have this measure so maybe we can we can't give the same name so same calculate total sales and move back by one day previous day calendar calendar date and if we bring this measure here now um, the challenge is um, so first we have 11,100 and the second is the previous day sale is 11,001 but there's no sale on second so pretty much because it does not have a continuous sale so if we do the comparison or any percentage change, it's always going to be either positive 100% or negative 100%, unfortunately, because the nature of the data is like this. Now, what we want to do here is to not compare like previous date, but what we're going to do is like when we are on January 12th, we want to compare January 12th sale with January 1st. That is the previous date when actual sale happened. When we are on January 14th, we want to compare it with the sales with January 12th. When we are in January 16th, we compare it with January 14th and so forth, so on. So, but this inbuilt previous day function does not work in this particular scenario. It's not working and not giving what we need. Um, so it means what we need to do is to find out, first of all, whatever date context we are at, we want to find out when the actually last visible date the sale happened. And then... From there, we compare the um, between the uh, two sales, like today sales and the last visible date sales. So let's start writing a measure uh, to to make this happen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to call it um, new measure and call it previous visible date sales. So first of all, we need to find out when the previous date sale happened. So what we can do is let's uh, let's get uh, current date, which is our calendar date, and then now uh, from here onward, we want the previous visible date. So what we can do is previous visible date. So that will be calculate. So what we want here is max of our transaction table where the date is less than equal to, less than actually not equal to equal to will give us today's date. So um, our current date in, in the context so calendar date less than current date let's uh, see what we it return us as do we get the correct previous visible date or not so let's do this and put this measure in here All right, so what we're getting is on January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, like all the dates it's listing and it is showing us when the previous sales happened. When we are on 4th of January, the previous sale happened on 1st of January, which looks correct. So if we are in January 12th, the previous sale happened on 
uh, still on January 1st. But when we are in January 13th, the previous date sale is actually happened on January 12th, which is $200. And then we are on January 16th, the previous date sale is happened on January 14th. So it seems like this is returning us the date what we're looking for. And now from here onward, we can find the sale of that previous visible date sales and then um, use it in, in, in our visualization. So, so that should be pretty straightforward. So what we can do here is we can say calculate. Maybe put it in another ups, another variable. So what we do is our previous visible date sales is equal to so calculate uh, press enter sorry calculate total sales where calendar date is equal to previous visible date and then we return previous visible date sales so this should do it. Let's see. All right, when we are on January 1st, we have 11,100 sales. There is no previous date, but when we are January 2nd, we are getting 11,100, which is correct. And when we join with 12, 13th, we are getting the sale for the previous date. So this is working as expected. So I will remove this measure for now. But the one challenge I'm seeing here is this works fine, but it is showing us all the dates um, and then sales repeating again and again and again. So which uh, is not something we want. So we can a little bit further uh, suppress um, the return of this when there is no sale in in current periods so what we can do is if is blank our total sales actually when not is blank then don't uh, return anything otherwise if it's it if today's sales or the in the current row contacts there is a sales then give us the previous date sale otherwise um, don't give us the sale so let's see how does that look like here you go so that's now giving us um, the sales for the previous date uh, visible date sales so January 12th giving us uh, to the January 1st sale and January 14th given January 12th and so forth so on well, one thing looks like the performance for this was really slow it took a while to um, populate this table with such a small data set so let's see where what where we can improve this I think one thing that there's no point calc doing this calculation if there is no sales then we we don't care about calculating previous visible date so what we can do is we can improve this particular um, uh, DAX code so I will call it previous date sale uh, maybe only give me calculate this if node is blank total sales if there is a sales in the current context of the date then only return the previous um, visible date otherwise there's no point calculating that because it's if calendar has like a 10 years of dates it's calculating the date for each date and we don't need to do that so let's see if this improves the performance here you go it actually ran pretty quickly and uh, just to show again so if i put this code back if i remove this condition 
uh, it takes a seat spins here and takes a while for it because now it is calculating the visible date for each date even we are not showing it here but it is doing for each date but once we we put in the code okay don't cal calculate the previous visible date uh, if there is no sales in the current row contacts then it's everything is fine because then it is only working on these five dates and then if I uh, execute this now and then it's pretty pretty fast so it runs pretty pretty fast and I don't think I need this condition here as well but let's double check here you go so it's pretty fast now and now we have the solution where we are looking at the current date sales with the previous visible date sales not the previous day but the previous visible date when the sale actually happened i hope you find it useful and this technique you can use in some other time intelligence or wherever you think is uh, uh, it's helpful and uh, leave your comments what do you think about this and uh, if it is useful for you or not and uh, if there is anything else you would you would like to see in these videos uh, do let me know and until next video, talk, have a good day and talk soon. Thank you. Bye now.